right morning everybody we have another Corolla here at the auto house this is gonna be a how-to video for rear wheel bearings and how do we know the wheel bearings are bad on this thing so common um, besides rear end noise if you if you grab the wheel pull in and out you can hear this thing If there's slop like that, that's usually a pretty good indication something is wrong back there. So we'll take off the wheels right now, take a look. All right, we have the wheels off. And I wanted to show you guys the slop in this thing. So you can see that axle move in and out. So that tells you something's going on back in here. I've seen before these four retainer bolts for the axles, um, they've backed out before. So it's important if you, these hard, this hardware is supposed to be one time use, but you know, you know how that goes. So um, just blue Loctite on these guys and then good and tight should be good enough. Um, so this will tell you um, that it's not that this hardware is loose, something's wrong with the bearing itself. So, yeah, sometimes you don't always need a slide hammer to take the axles out. If you use your rotor and uh, bolt it up upside down and a little bit of slop so you can use the rotor as a slide hammer to pull out on the axle, sometimes if the axle and the axle housing have not been married for a long time, you'll be able to just use this, but today we're not gonna be able to. So luckily I have a slide hammer, but you can also go to AutoZone and they have free tool rentals. So yeah, it's hammer time. Stop. Hammer time. All right, cool, we got both axles out. <clears throat> you can see by the rust, these guys have been married for a long time. And then you can physically see this guy. And then, yeah, it's not supposed to sound like that. Same thing with the other one. This was the worst, but same thing with this guy. All right, so you have your axle bearing itself and then the axle bearing retainer. The retainer also acts as like the inner race for the oil seal inside the axle tube. We're gonna replace the oil seal in the axle tube. The bearing retainers are gonna get cut off. Um, you do not press these off. When we press these back on, you'll see why, because these things gotta get heated and it takes a ton of force to install these guys so these will get cut off all right let's do it <laughs> i don't know if you want to get in we'll uh take the old uh, axle seal out um this tool's from harbor freight and this is what i use to take the axle seals out so um i'll usually uh like break brace it up against something brace it up like that and then i gotta you gotta hit this guy Oh, that's it. Yeah, here's the one we're gonna put in. Um, I prefer to use the <clears throat> I prefer to use the OEM ones because it's like uh, it's like metal on the outside. Um, but these are fine too. Yeah, this is a Timken seal. Uh, someone made this for me. Um, you can see uh, his YouTube. It's um, the Corner Balance YouTube channel. It's Grand Mighty, and. Uh, this is the seal installer tool that he made for me. There's a depth, if you look in the service manual, a drive-in depth, but actually if you just um, drive this guy in flush, um, should be good enough. 
So that's just yeah. regular plumbing pipe. Yeah, just regular plastic pipe. Um, you just gotta go to Home Depot and find like the right diameter. Uh, don't use a punch. I've seen people destroy these seals trying to use a punch and try to hit this thing in a circle. Yeah. You can also get a kit like a Harbor Freight for has all the different discs for oh, installing this. Right. Yeah. Um, another thing I put. Um, if you look at the open side, I put grease in there. This is good for um, any rubber seal with that uh, metal spring inside to put tension on whatever it's trying to seal against. So when you hammer against this guy, the spring doesn't accidentally pop out. So put grease inside in the back of this guy. Does it matter what type of grease? Um, just whatever generic grease. Don't use white lithium grease. Whatever generic grease is fine. And then this will like wash out with the rest of the gear oil. It's not going to hurt anything. All right, so I have the new axle seal installed and you can see where it rests this outer ring so ideally you'd get a piece of pipe that was the id would um, be the size of this seal and then the od would uh, be able to touch that outer um, part of the rear axle and you can see when i say uh, there's a lip right here so as long as you drive it flush with um, the lip on the rear axle housing you should be fine so it looks like the axle seal i od od of the axle seal is 65 mil so maybe if you get a piece of pipe that's like 65 mil id and then i don't know 68 mil od something around there that'd be a good piece of pipe as a install tool so yeah we'll get to these guys the key with these these are super tight fit so these do need to be cut off but the key if you go with this mentality is to scribe a line a cut deep enough but not all the way through and then we will use we will use this I think it's for tile but yeah this is cool so you don't smash your hand when you scribe a cut deep enough this guy will spread open the cut and then the cut will naturally crack open and uh, so you won't have to mar up the axle so don't cut all the way through the key is to scribe a cut that's deep enough so you can finally use this chisel to break all the way through and take this guy off once this guy comes off we're gonna actually use the press and press this this guy's okay to press off all right let's do it all right let's check it out got one of the races off and as you can see that cut wasn't even that deep so I scribed a deep enough line that I could use the punch to crack this guy open you can see I did not cut all the way through hopefully you guys can see that crack in here but yeah I hit this enough times this thing cracked in the middle and I saw it spin so I knew this thing was broken and then as it should be you see zero cut marks on the axle which that's how it should be um, the blade should never hit this guy so we're gonna cut the other one off. We'll use the bearing splitter to take these bearings off and we'll come back when I have both the new bearings pressed on. Make sure these guys have to go on first before these bearings. All right, so I got one assembled. See the new bearing and the retainer. Make sure this guy goes on first. If you press these two on and forget this guy, your death gets game over. So the retainer has a face up and face down. You want the smooth side facing up like this. Um, so it slides into the seal. So not the square part, the smooth side to slide into the seal. It's a pretty warm day today. So I ended up not needing to heat these up. But in the service manual, they want you to heat these up in an oil bath um, so that's easier to pr um, press these guys on. I'll do a recording of me pressing them on. You can see how tight the fit is. 
Um, but yeah, no matter what, you're gonna see me press these on right now, but it's hot today, so. Um, but yeah, regardless, I would heat these up no matter what. This is typically what I use to heat up bearings. It's just a hot plate and then a regular cooking pot. I'll fill that guy up with gear oil and I'll heat the bearing until 300 degrees. And I know, and I know 300 degrees because I have the infrared thermometer. If you're gonna heat these up, you wanna do a dry run first. Make sure your press is set up at the correct height. Otherwise you, you put everything on and you're about to press and like, ah, oh, it's too short. Now it's too tall. So, so do a dry run first uh, to make sure the press is at the right height. So yeah, let's do it. Typically you'd want a socket or something to uh, press it on, but this will work for today. The key is this guy's 20 tons. I think my 10 ton one could, couldn't even do this. So, so it's important that this guy, the retainer seated all the way on because uh, this isn't all the way on. This guy can still do this thing. So I've seen Corollas where it still has play in the axle because the shop that did this job um, didn't either like, didn't have a big enough press or didn't um, press the retainers on all the way. All right, so before we plug these axles in, um, I would probably either put some grease or some gear oil still on the surface of this guy before you plug it into the fresh seal. Then also the surface of this bearing, because this is the precision fit into the rear axle tubes. So I put a light smear of anti-seize on these guys just so don't rust and get stuck in the axle tubes. Lastly, these bolts and nuts that are supposed to be one-time use, um, it's okay to use them again. Just make sure to blue Loctite these guys. And then I wanna say, don't quote me on this, the torque spec is like 50 foot pounds, but good and tight is, is <laughs> yeah, good and tight. You do what you want, but good and tight. All right, so that's our AE86 rear axle bearing how-to video. Remember to like and subscribe, leave a comment below. So yeah, thanks again for watching.